welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to fit some GPIO pins to my Raspberry Pi Zero. I'll then connect the Pi up via those pins to some LEDs, write a bit of Python code, and test that everything is working OK. Right, to uh, fit some uh, GPIO pins to our Pi Zero, we have to start obviously with Pi Zero. Here it is. I'm going to take out the uh, SD card because we may do some damage doing this, so we might as well at least have that out of harm's way. Now, we have to have some pins to fit, and for that I'm going to turn to this, which is the uh, exciting little tin which came with my uh, Pi Zero from the Pi Hut. Almost everyone selling you a Pi Zero will try and sell you an extra bit so they can have some profit margin at all on these things. And this is a very, very useful little kit, and it's very exciting because it comes in a tin. Great, you see, I like little tins, they're lovely. You can put the tops on, take them off, very good. Anyway, in here, under the piece of foam, there were various things. And uh, let's actually just tip them out, have them all, all there to uh, play with. There we are. I've shown you some of these last time. This is the uh, connector for attaching full-size USB peripherals. And there's the HDMI thing I happened not to use. And there's some sticky feet here, which you can use to stick feet on. But the critical things are these, which are GPIO connectors for our board. And they give you a range of options here. They've got a GPIO connector like this one. This is the standard GPIO connector. This would simply drop in like that on, on the board, and we then just have to solder on the back. And indeed, that's exactly what I'm going to do. And that will give us these GPIO pins on the top, just like any other Pi. But if you wanted to, you could fit one of these. This is also a GPIO connector, but this gives you sockets you can push into rather than um, standard pins. So you might want to try one of them. Um, or you can do this in pieces. You've got single connectors here. There's one there, and there's one I just left in the box over here. Here it is, look, you could fit those. I'm not quite sure why that's better, but maybe you want one fitted. We might use bits of those in the future to make a video connection, actually. Or you could fit one of these, which is a uh, right angle connector. So this would give you the opportunity to have GPIO sticking out the edge, which given how thin a uh, Raspberry Pi Zero is, that could be a rather useful thing to do. But here I'm going to stick with the uh, standard connector to make my Raspberry Pi Zero look as close as possible to a standard Raspberry Pi with its GPIO pins. Now, in addition to that, we'll need a few other things. Not least, we'll need a soldering iron to solder on our GPIO pins. This is a brand new soldering iron I bought. Brand new soldering iron, I think a silver line soldering iron. I bought a new iron because the tip on my old iron was in not very good condition. I needed a very fine tip to work on Raspberry Pi's uh, pins. And so I couldn't get a new tip from the old iron. It was barely 20 years old. You just can't get the parts these days. So I've got this new iron. This is a 15 watt soldering iron. I would advise a very low wattage iron to work on delicate electronics. And I've also even got the nice stand. You don't have to get the stand like this, but if you don't spend a few dollars or pounds buying a stand, the things you burn holes in by not having a stand, I'm sure will cost you more. And this also has a bit of sponge here, which I've damped down so we can uh, very gently just keep our tip nice and clean when this is actually hot. Final thing we're going to need is some solder. This is some solder. This is a lead-based solder. So these days, sometimes you get a non-lead solder. I'm choosing to use lead solder here for the simple reason that lead-based solder has a lower melting point. So in terms of doing delicate work on delicate electronic boards, which let's be honest, we're really designed to be soldered by machines, we might as well give us the best chance of getting this right and doing no damage. So this is traditional lead-based solder. Do remember not to give traditional lead-based solder to your child to suck on as a dummy. I'm sure you wouldn't. It's of course very poisonous. Don't go uh, soldering water pipes and things with this. But for delicate electronics, lead-based solder is the best thing to use. Right, with the uh, soldering iron warmed up and the Pi Zero nicely fastened down with blue tack to hold the GPIO pins in place till we've soldered them, it's time to take the uh, Pi Zero's life in our hands and go in with the soldering iron. This is my brand new soldering iron. I'm just starting over here. Hold the soldering iron on, heat the pin and that, and then hopefully just a little bit of solder will melt. Doesn't want to melt, go on. There we are, little tiny bit of solder. On the jaw, oh, that's not too bad, is it? We try another one. 
one over next to it. Why does it have so many GPIO pins? Can hate it. Little tiny bit of solder. And there we are. Oh, this will work. It's going to be a rather long process, as you can see, but it will work one. See, don't get too cocky. Don't think it's working too well or it will stop working. That was a good one, wasn't it? And uh, moving along. I seem to be getting better as I go. And just finishing off there, the last one. Uh, I think we've got all 40 GPIO pins now soldered to our Pi Zero. So if we just uh, go in, have a look underneath, take off the blue tack, hope it hasn't melted anywhere it shouldn't. It doesn't look like it has actually. This is quite, a, quite good, isn't it? Take that, that off. No, the board looks fine. We've survived soldering with me in one piece and hopefully this, although we'll find out if it still works in a second. But as you can hopefully see, those are nicely securely fastened on pins. Is my soldering perfect there? No, it isn't, but um, it's not bad from machine. This is not a video of the best ever soldering onto a board, but hopefully it's not too bad. I just bring in there, where, where are you? There's a um, Raspberry Pi 3 soldering. Let's flick that over. There's my soldering. Is my soldering as good as a machine? It isn't, but hopefully it'll be good enough to work. And as a special present for the Pi Zero for having endured the soldering, I'm going to fit it in a Pi Bow, one of these little cases from Pi Maroni. You might remember I bought two Pi Zeros, one came with this nice little case, so I'll clear uh, out the packaging. Oh, it's exciting, isn't it? Like a proper Christmas present, this one, because it comes in packaging like this. Uh, these are our layers of acrylic that fit together to make a case, if I can get the thing apart. It's, wow, that's well packed, that is, isn't it? And uh, here we have what different layers of plastic here and um, some tiny uh, plasticated screws, I think we would call those. And so what we have to do in theory is to take out our plasticated screws, take our uh, Pi Zero there, and uh, I think it starts with uh, the bottom layer must be, I presume, that one, because that is uh, dark coloured. I've got to figure out how this works now, haven't I? How does this work exactly? Or is that the top one? I think that's the top one. Let, let me sort this out and uh, by the magic of filmmaking, show you it all put together. There we are, it works uh, perfectly well. I've just stacked the different layers of plastic on top of each other, secured them with these uh, plasticated screws. Only thing I don't like about this case is you can't access the uh, SD card slot when things are in the case, but actually that's not that much of a problem. You have to change the card very frequently. And so there we have our Raspberry Pi Zero encased with a GPIO pins fitted on the back there. And it's now time, I think, to do something exciting with those GPIO pins. Right, to uh, test out our new uh, GPIO pins, I've got the Pi Zero fastened down here on a surface next to a small breadboard. I'm going to take these two uh, red 5mm LEDs and connect them to the Pi to the GPIO pins and connect them in series with these uh, 470 ohm current limiting resistors. A lot of debate online about exactly which resistors you should do is use with LEDs in the Raspberry Pi. It does depend on the LEDs themselves, have different electrical characteristics. But if you use 470 ohm resistors, you should be very, very safe. You won't blow things up. I've also got here some wires to actually connect things together. So I'll start putting things together here. And I'm sure I'll show you on screen a diagram what's going on as well so you can see the connections. And I've done this previously in my Raspberry Pi robotics number one video. So I connect pin six here on the Pi goes to our ground rail on the, um, the breadboard. These wires probably go off screen. Now you can still see them, that's good. I'm then going to connect pin seven, a nice orangey wire there, which must be the pin down there. Must get these pins right, pin seven. It won't push in, push in. Oh, it has pushed in. It wanted to play in the end, and that's going to connect to this first rail on the breadboard. We're then going to connect that to a LED's positive terminal there. That's a longer wire, which will go into there like that. And then we'll loop that back to ground rail using a current limiting resistor, which I've just taken off screen so I can actually get that in there. And in there, hopefully push that in and in. There we are. So that LED is looped through from GPIO pin 
through, through the ID, through a current limiting resistor, back to the negative rail. We'll do that for the other one, which is going to be on pin 11, if I can count. So it is what? 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 is that one there. That will also connect in to uh, the breadboard. We'll chuck that over here. Oh, you can never get your wires in, can you? Put that wiring in there. That's going to go to positive on here, like that. And finally, oh, it's getting exciting now. Take the final resistor, form it up, put it in, and we've now got beautifully connected, hopefully, there we are, two LEDs connected up to our Raspberry Pi, so we can hopefully control them via some uh, Python GPIO commands. Right, I've now connected up my Raspberry Pi Zero to HDMI from Monta to power and to a combined uh, keyboard-mouse combination, my little Rai keyboard linked into the one USB port. And as you can see, I booted here into the Raspbian desktop. In many ways, it would be much better to be running in command line mode for doing GPIO work on the Pi Zero because of the one USB port. But here we'll stick in that Raspbian and that we'll do a bit other things maybe in the next video. So here I'm going to run up the uh, terminal. And in the terminal, I'm going to type sudo and idle to run the idle programming environment in root mode. You have to run in root mode if you're going to access the GPIO pins. And then we wait a little minute because we are on a Raspberry Pi Zero, not quite as fast as a, a Raspberry Pi, um, well, two or three. And now let's move that across so you can see things properly. And then we'll go to a file. And I've actually written the code for this. Still trying to make things work exactly on this little keypad. Go on, you little swine. And we want that bit of code there, which I've already written for us. And I'll just move this across the screen as well. You don't lose me on the edge. And I flick to a normal mouse by the magic of filmmaking because it was driving me mad to have that uh, little pad thing. Anyway, I've written some code here. I've even put comments in my code because people moan when I don't put comments in my code. But basically here we're going to import some libraries to use in this bit of code. The first library is the uh, GPIO library, which you'd probably guess we need to run GPIO stuff. And I'm going to import the library called time, which gives us some time function. I'm then going to uh, set the numbering mode of the GPIO pins. There's different ways you can address the pins in terms of which numbers correspond to which pin. Obviously, clear is to get that right. I like board mode, it's the simplest one. It just labels them across one, two, three, four, five, six, etc. And then I'm going to set pin seven and pin 11 both as outputs. Those were the pins we connected our LEDs to. And then we've got a very, very simple little loop to uh, blink our LEDs uh, 10 times. So we're doing a little um, loop there for exit range, it'll flick through, and then we're going to set initially the first GPIO pin pin 7 to true and 11 to false, so one LED is on, other one's off. Wait half a second with time sleep 0.5, flick the GPIO pins over, so the one that was on is off and vice versa. Wait again, it'll cycle through the loop, and finally on the end of this we're being tidy, we're setting our GPIO pins back to a nice clean state with GPIO and cleanup. As I said previously, I've done this in much more detail than my previous Raspberry Pi Robotics uh, number one video. So this is basically just a test things are working today. So all I have to do now is to go to run and a run module. And hopefully if we flick back to the actual thing. Yes, we have got LEDs going bing, 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 bing. Isn't that exciting? If it's not exciting for you, you probably shouldn't be doing this kind of stuff. If it is exciting, then we've done something really cool. We've managed to attach some GPIO pins to our Raspberry Pi Zero, not blow the thing up, and to prove they actually work. With some GPIO pins fitted, the Raspberry Pi Zero is all set for a wide range of embedded applications, some of which I'll explore in future videos. But now that's it for this time, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.